God tonight. But let me be clear. Let me be clear from the beginning. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to preach the word of God, amen? So we're going to start with a little exercise. True or false? If you believe the answer to the question I will ask is true, then you will raise your hand. I think we, we can handle that, college students, yeah. First question. You only use 10% of your brain. If you believe that's true, you raise your hand. Now you gotta be committed to it. You can't be like, you know. Okay. False. All right. I got four questions, so you're down one. All right, here we go. Question number two. True or false? A child could swim through the veins of a blue whale. True or false? Is that your final answer? That's true. Okay, all right, here we go, here we go. All right. Question number three. It is possible to hear the roar of a lion from five miles away. Wow. I don't know. Some of these questions might sound true. Maybe they're not true. I don't know. Are you sure you're, you're good with your answer? Would you bet your dinner on it? It's true. All right, there you go. Chicken wings for everybody. All right, here we go. Last question. Here we go. This is a good one. True or false? Lightning never strikes the same place more than once. If you believe it's true, you gotta raise your hand. Let me, ask, let me just, let me repeat the question. It's, it's Friday night, it's been a long night. Lightning never strikes the same place more than once. True or false? Do we get to call a friend? No? You can call me? It's false. Sorry. Now, if you only got one of those right, I'm gonna have to ask you to, no, I'm just kidding. You know, um, men and women have been searching for truth for centuries. Plato said the following, they deem him their worst enemy who tells them the truth. Gandhi says, morality is the basis of things and truth is a substance of all morality. Buddha says, three things cannot be long hidden, the sun, the moon, and the truth. You know, these are great philosophers of our age. Many of them you study here in school and your respective colleges. Yet the answer of truth has always been in front of men's eyes and in front of their very faces. The word truth appears 127 times in the Bible. In John 1.14, the Bible says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one. Who's no one? Everybody. No one. Comes to the Father except through me. 
See, Jesus was the only one who made a claim such as this. This is what separates Jesus from any philosopher, any prophet, any great teacher. He didn't just speak about truth. He said, I am the truth. I want you to understand the weight of what you and I are about to read tonight. It's unbelievable. The all-knowing, the all-powerful, who is in all, through all, the beginning and the end, the almighty God. We're going to listen to his infallible truth. That's a title for tonight, the infallible truth. My first point, he has a desire the truth. 1 Timothy chapter 2. If you have a Bible, open it up. If you don't have a Bible, you can ask someone next to you. If they don't share their Bible, then you can nudge them a little bit. Hey, share your Bible. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 2, you got to desire the truth. There's no question that the Word of God is infallible. It cannot be wrong. It is absolute truth. But that in itself does not solve humankind's problem. They must desire truth. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3 says, This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. See, for you and I, the task tonight is to desire what God desires. He desires truth. Because through this knowledge of truth, God says you and I can be saved. There's an implication here about what God desires. Number one, you and I are not born into truth. So well, my, my, my daddy's a pastor. That's good. My, 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 you know, my, my grandpa's a deacon. So that means I'm saved because he's saved. That's not what the scripture tells us here. God desires all men to come to a knowledge of the truth, which implies that you and I are not born with it. We don't have it. It doesn't matter what environment you grew up in. You might be absent of the truth, and you have to acquire it. But you only acquire that which you desire. Let's go to Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. We're going to look at a lot of scriptures tonight. I hope that's okay with you. Isaiah 59, let's read together here in verse 15. We believe in the old and you and all. Verse 15, it says, truth is nowhere to be found. And whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. The Lord looked and was displeased. that There was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm worked salvation for him. His own righteousness sustained him. You know, in the time of Isaiah, truth was absent amongst the people. And the reality is, and it's sad as it is today, even the 21st century, in a time where you have more churches than ever before, you have more access to the Bible than ever before in so many languages, colors, and places. Yet the truth remains absent in people's lives. I believe that people desire religion and not truth. See, religion, it makes you feel less guilty. It makes you feel, at least I'm not like that guy over there. I actually showed up to this Friday night devotional, whatever it's called, thing. And a little loud, but hey, I can get into it. Jesus was not into you becoming religious. Jesus was not into you having a cross hanging from your neck. If you have one, that's cool. That's not what fires him up, though. It doesn't fire him up that you're just saying, hey, you know, praise God. Hey, God bless you. If you say that, that's cool. But that's not what he's into. He's into truth. See, truth, the difference is, is truth calls you to change. 
Look at Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah 7, verse 23. Sorry, verse 22, it says, For when I brought your forefathers out of Egypt and spoke to them, I did not just give them commands about burnt offerings and sacrifices, but I gave them this command. Obey me. And I will be your God. Hold on a second. That's, that's different, though. That's different than what I grew up believing. See, what I grew up believing is, believe in me, and I'll be your God. That's not what God says, actually. Obey me, then I'll be your God. So I can believe all I want, and God is still not my God. This is just truth. Truth doesn't have emotion. The Bible doesn't have a feeling. It doesn't care how you feel. It's true. It's true. When you're in your math class, and you have an equation, a problem to, make, to, to, to give the answer to, and you get it wrong. And you go up to your professor, hey, professor, look, I, I just wasn't feeling it today. I woke up, had a rough day, you know, my lucky charm was all gone, my roommate took him. Like, and I walked into class, and, 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 and I just was, it, it, like, math has no emotion here. Like, it's, 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 it's right or it's wrong. Obey me, I will be your God, and you will be my people. Walk in all my ways, I command you, that it may go well with you. But they did not listen or pay attention. Instead, they followed the stubborn inclinations of their evil hearts. They went backward, not forward. From that time, your forefathers left Egypt until now, and after they Again and again, I sent you my servant, the prophets. But they did not listen to me or pay attention. They were stiff-necked, and they're more evil than their forefathers. See, the people in Jeremiah's time, very similar to Isaiah's time, and very similar to our time. It's not like they did not have access to the truth. They just relied upon the establishment of the time. See, I'm supposed to be the guy who, like, teaches you. And you throw a few bucks into a basket, and uh, I'm supposed to teach you, and then you go and feel bitter about yourselves, and then come back with me the next week. That's not how it works. God says, I expect you to know this, and I expect you to obey it. Sadly, the people were led astray by those of the establishment. Instead of leading them to God, they led them away from God. Therefore, the truth perished. See, just because you started with truth doesn't mean you'll always have truth. Just because you got saved, it means you're always saved. What caused truth to perish? As the Bible says, they listen to the stubborn inclinations of their hearts. Here's the truth, guys. Your heart cannot be trusted. For some of you, for sure, your heart cannot be trusted. Maybe in the fellowship break already. Maybe in the fellowship break, you already put your foot in your mouth. Like you were like, you know what? I know that the interest is mutual. I just know it. I, I just. Like, bro, how do you know it? I just, I just feel it, bro. The in, I know the interest has got to be mutual. There's no possible way. Every time I walk by, there's like, I just get this sensation like. So, so naturally, I, I went to fellowship. And um, I said, hey, you know, um, how's your quiet time? Just to let you know, uh, I've read the whole Bible already. And... Um, you know, uh, I'm looking for the one. Uh, and you're like, you're like gonna get your Bible out, and then you get up, and like the sister's gone. Like, man, that heart, man. 
it feels a bunch of stuff. The scripture tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things. Look, we live in an age where it's about follow your heart. Hey, do what makes you happy. If it makes you happy, hey, I can't judge you. You don't judge me. Hey, we coexist that way. Okay, so if I feel something right now, like I feel like, I feel like, like slapping Nick. I just, I don't know. I got like this, I got like this twitch in my arm and I got to get rid of it, you know? Like I, but here's the thing though, here's the thing. It feels right. Today's philosophy will say, well, if it feels right to you, I mean, who am I? Hey, if you feel like a woman, but you're really a man, then, I mean, what can I say? I think the issue with society today is that we put too much stock into what we feel. And then our lives are a flat disaster. You're, you're like a hot mess every day. Because you live by how you feel. One day you feel great, like, all right, let's, let's really do this. But then you just feel down. It's like, oh, my Lord. Get this. Your heart is stubborn. It's stubborn, man. It has inclinations. It must not be trusted. Now, let me encourage you. This is not a Gen Z problem. You know you're Gen Z, right? You're Gen Z. We have a few millennials here, and maybe some other ones. This is not a Gen Z problem. Look at Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Look, the, the truth is, it's infallible. The Word of God is infallible. It is infallible truth. It cannot be wrong. That in itself won't save you. You've got to desire truth. Romans 1 verse 25 says, let's start in verse 24. Therefore God gave him over in the sinful desires of their hearts. See, man's always had stubborn inclinations. You know, I grew up in an environment where my dad was an alcoholic. There's true genetic science that says some of this stuff genetically passes. So technically, I would be more inclined myself to become an alcoholic. But I have a choice to desire truth. God here said, look, you want to be stubborn? I'm going to give you over to it. Give them over to their sinful desires of their hearts, to sexual impurity, for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie. And it worshipped and served, created things, rather than the creator. Verse 20, so because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural relations with unnatural ones. Even the same way the men also abandoned natural relations with women and inflamed their lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with one another. They received in themselves due penalty for their perversion. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do all that ought not to be done. They become filled with every kind of wickedness, and it goes on from there. Look, what's Satan's objective? Look, Satan doesn't even mind that you become a worshiper. He's already quite fired up. No problem. As long as you worship something else or someone else, and not God. Today, I believe one of our gods is what you and I prioritize. Like, semester just started. And like, is it a coincidence that somehow someone met you somewhere? I don't know how it all worked out. They ended up here. Now, is that just like a random like series of events that happened? Or is God perfectly orchestrating the events of your life so you can actually seek him and maybe one day find him? But I'm too busy. I got a full schedule. I mean, I want to graduate one day. Yeah, that's good. I mean, God gave you school. You do know that, right? Well, I mean, you know, my family, they don't really agree with what I'm doing. So, I mean, I don't think I can do it. 
All right, I mean, how old are you, number one? Uh, I didn't see you calling your mama last weekend when you decided to do X, Y, Z. Now, now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I got the Bible in front of me. Oh, I gotta call mama, mama? Mama? Mama, what should I do? Man, if I was your mom, I would just slap you silly, man. Why are you calling me? Why are you calling me? Sometimes, guys, we prioritize relationships. And life all of a sudden revolves around that one person. Well, I don't think she's going to like me doing this Christian thing. Okay. All right. So you're going to worship a created thing? Or the creator? That's on you. That's on you. That's on you. I think, you know, we come into school and we have, like, ideology. We're like, you know, we are idealists. And that's good. There's a, there's a certain attribute of that that is very healthy and good. But are you more devoted to your ideology, to your perspective on life and what's right or what's wrong, that it defines you? Or are you willing to put that aside for what truly is true? What was the problem during Isaiah's time? They shunned correction. They desired to be right more than to be righteous. There was a stubbornness. What does the scripture say? It says, I send you a prophet. And you just don't pay attention. God says, okay, no problem. I'll send you people. Yes, I'm a God of grace and a God of love. But I, God also is a God of justice. And maybe it's hard for you to comprehend that because your daddy gave you everything you wanted. Oh, yeah. That's fine. That's okay. That's okay. God's not your dad. My father was the opposite. My, my father was very absent yeah. in my life. So when I got closer to God, I thought God is just this superpower in the skies that just wants me to perform. Not realizing that's not who God is at all, actually. You and I come in and we have our perspective of who God is from a variety of different angles. They reject the truth and they gave themselves over to lie. It says that they exchanged God. For a lie. Why would they do this? People say, ignorance is bliss. Really? Let's dissect that. Suicide. Suicide is the number two leading cause of death for college students. Ignorance. They don't have truth in their lives. And the only way they can figure out how to deal with the pain and the disappointment and the emptiness of life is to then end my life because of ignorance of truth. Ignorance is bliss. Women ages 18 to 24 obtain 42% of all abortions. You know, there was an article that came out that because the whole, you know, legislation got overturned it says that colleges are unprepared to deal with this and they're freaking out about what colleges have to do to provide these services instead of addressing the heart of the matter which is men and women are choosing not to live by truth we can solve hunger do you know that we can solve teen pregnancies we can solve all those things with this thing right here that's it that's it we can solve it. Ignorance is not bliss. It's actually the greatest miss. The only thing that you and I should be stubborn about is stubborn to know the truth. Let's go to John 8. My second point you get to desire the truth, but you get to know the truth. Now think about this. If you were Satan, maybe not the thought that you thought you were going to have at a campus devotion. 
let's be objective here, okay? Be objective. You yellow, just stick with me, okay? Stick with me. If you were Satan and you wanted to suppress and muddy the truth, what would you do? What would you do if you wanted to muddy the truth? You wanted to make it confusing. You would infiltrate Christianity. Now you, if you're smart, which the devil is smart, would not eliminate it completely. Instead, you would create different colors of it, different shades, different concepts that looks kind of like the truth, but not the full truth. So much so that you will live life not knowing what is really true and what it is false. There's over 40,000 denominations today. You're going to tell me that we serve one God, one Jesus, one word, and 40,000 denominations. Something wrong with that math. I don't think it was ever the design of God for us to have 40 different versions of Christianity. What happened? People don't love the truth. Because the truth causes you to change. John 8 verse 31. To the Jews who have believed in Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then and only then will you know the truth. And that truth will set you free. Well, they answered him, Hey, we are Abraham's descendants. We've never been slaves of anyone. How can you say we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. How do you know if you know the truth? You ever thought about that? How do you know you walked in today thinking you know the truth? How do you know that? What's your basis? What's your reference point? You're, 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 you're going to base your salvation on a maybe? The greatest purpose that you and I can live for is that we can see God one day. Hey, you don't have a deep understanding of how do you know if you know truth. Let me help you out. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. You know, this stuff here has been here for 2,000 years. I didn't write it in your Bible last night when you were asleep, okay? It's been there. It's been there. 1 John chapter 2, you get to know truth. You can desire it. Man, man, I desire truth. Man, I want to know truth. Okay, great. You got to know it, though. You know, now we've kind of shifted in society. Now it's like the pastor movement. Who's the coolest pastor? It's not like, hey, what church you go to? Hey, what pastor you follow? Like, you know, does he have ripped jeans? Kind of like ripped jeans. I already disappointed many of you. So the guy there, uh, he's supposed to know the truth. How do you know if what he's telling you is actually true? Well, he went to like some theology school and it's, he's, that's what he says. It's, uh, okay. Last time I checked, people could be wrong. You gotta know truth. How do you know if you know truth? Look at 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. The man who says, hey, I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Now, does, does God want you to believe in Jesus? Yeah, of course. Of course he does. You got to have faith in Jesus. Does he expect you just to believe in Jesus? No. If you believe that, or you know someone who teaches that, God, not me, not the uh, dream tribe uh, variety of campus ministries here, uh, I forgot all the names. If you believe that, 
If you believe, the only thing you must do is believe to be saved. Or someone teaches this. What does God say that person is? A liar. Man, God doesn't mess around. Like Jesus was not the guy like on a frame with like he's stroking a little lamb. Like he's so insecure and worried and he's lonely. So he needs a little lamb to like stroke and go to sleep at night. That's not Jesus. Jesus was a revolutionary. He was a fighter. Jesus was like, you don't like this, then go home. That's who Jesus was. The idea that belief alone saves us is probably one of Satan's greatest lies. Think about this, though. Why does it work? Why do so many people fall for that lie? Well, because it, it speaks to our sinful nature. He knows our inclinations. He knows you better than you know yourself. Naturally, in our sinful nature, we want the easy way out. What is the, the, the path of least resistance? I want to live my life on this earth, distant from God, but I want to die and be in eternity with God. Okay, hold on a second. Live on this earth, distant from God's word, but you want to die and be in eternity with God. How does that even make sense? Well, uh, God is merciful. That's true. But God also knows what's true, what's not true. It's such a wicked belief based on not sound doctrine. If that truly was true, this nation would be very different. A large percentage of our incredible nation that we call America is quote unquote Christian. Okay? So then why do we have more social unrest now than ever before? We're still dealing with prejudice over how many years? Like my skin has to, my skin color has to be that much of a hindrance to you? Oh, but you're a Christian. No, no, there's a lot of people that know about Jesus. Know about him. But according to God, they don't know who he is. Because when Jesus equates knowing him, you have to live like him. This is why this group is such a powerful group. Look around you. Different colors, shapes, everything. Jesus said, look, you're on my team. None of you believe in me if you hold to my teaching. That word hold means to abide, to live. To live in him. Any other belief makes you a slave to sin. Look, you know what you're doing is not right. Let's just, just cut to the chaser. You know. You know. I don't have to show you anything. You know. When my friends play the Bible with me, like, he, he didn't have to open the Bible, man. I just said, yeah, I'm guilty, man. I'm guilty. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it. I knew how I was living. Not what I was believing, what I was living. You know, when people feel like a slave, they feel trapped. They feel controlled. They feel like a slave. But they really want to get out of it. They want to get out of the cycle of greed and jealousy and envy. You know, being a spiritual slave to sin is like, being in debt. I'm not talking about school loans here. That's an investment for your future. I'm talking about credit card debt. Now you know what happened. You know what happened. It was a long day. You were cramming for an assignment that you know you had that was due like a week ago. And you got busy because your life is busy. And you like crammed it, turned that puppy in, you're like, oh. but you didn't eat the whole day. You're walking down the quad and then there's a table set up and they got Skittles on the table. 
Man, I'm so hungry. Hey, uh, we're giving away Skittles. And they had like all the different type of Skittles, you know, like the sour ones and the, they, like, the blended ones. And say, hey, would you, would you like a bag? I'm like, yeah, I love, love a bag. Well, you sign up for this credit card, it'll be deal. You don't have to use it anyway. I mean, we all need credit at some point, but you know, just you grab a couple bags. Uh, I mean, just what's, what's, I mean, I can get it. I can, I can, I can, I can cancel at any point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That thing comes in the mail. Ashen Hughes. Wow. It's like that silver one, you know? It's like. And he's like, well, you know, for a rainy day, like if something ever happens, it's going to be there. Um, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. And, uh, you know, he has to go to Tar J, you know, get some stuff, you know. Uh, and like this stuff is not a sister thing. It's like a people thing. It's a people thing. We don't discriminate. He's walking in. He's just going to get milk. That's all. He's got lucky charms. He's got no milk. You can't have lucky charms without no milk. So, walks in, grabs the gallon of milk. He's a whole milk guy. All right, so whole milk. Because he thinks, you know, whole milk, holy, it's got to be a connection there. So, so grabs it. It's about to walk out. About to walk out. Oh, that's a nice shirt. <laughs> now, uh, I'm, I'm going to use it to worship God, though. Like, <laughs> like I got to be my best to God. But he opens up his wallet, he's got like five bucks. Oh. Enough for the whole milk. The silver. <laughs> All right. Little Nehemiah prayer in the moment. God. I promise, just this one time. <laughs> but God, I'm going to pay back as soon as the bill comes. Swipe. He walks out with a nice, clean shirt. And his milk. And the cycle goes on. And it's like, Five bucks, 10 bucks, 15, 20. Now the thing is maxed out. Oh. And then one day he's walking on campus, and now it's M&M's. Oh. The M&M guy is there. So he has an epiphany. Like, I think the spirit is speaking to me. I know what I'll do. I'll get another credit card, and I'll pay off this one. It's got zero interest for like two months. I'm gonna like do Uber and DoorDash it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay it off. And it's like this, and there's so much debt. And it's like choking our faith out. Being enslaved to sin, you have so much debt, so much weight. And it, it gets so deep that you're like, how do I even get out of this thing? So therefore, as a result, I just keep doing it. And the vicious cycle continues. You know, 200,000 Americans are addicted to porn. Like, women were created in God's image. 28,000 people are watching it at any given moment. Enslaved. At some point, like, they start off and like, ah, oh, this is wrong. This is wrong. But they're addicted. They're enslaved. They're controlled. And Jesus said, look, if you would know truth, I can actually set you free. Set you free. Like the stuff that used to control you no more. Why is it that although my inclination of what I grew up with, I should be an alcoholic, divorced, and have kids everywhere? That's, that's, that was, should have been my path. 
Instead, because of the truth of God, I've been married for 19 years, have three beautiful kids, and everything else. What? Now I get it. You've considered Christianity. But your Christian friends are no different. If anything, they're worse. Today, Christianity has become a label, a checkbox, an extracurricular, a hobby. It no longer dictates how you and I live our lives. You know, the half-brother of Jesus Christ said the following in James chapter 2, verse 14. It says, what good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? It's a rhetorical question, but I think a question that we got to answer. Can someone who believes in Jesus go to heaven if he doesn't obey God? Can someone who believes in Jesus go to heaven if he chooses not to listen or pay attention to God? There is a doctrine across America and every college campus that will tell you that you can. And yet you live enslaved, controlled by sin, and you're wondering where the heck is God? God is here. God is here. But you got to hold. you got to actually live it. And this group of people are those that just believe the truth. They know the truth. They're living the truth. That's who this group is. One more scripture, and we'll close tonight. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs 4. You know, if you ever want to get sliced and diced, like the moment you just look at the page, just look at Proverbs. Some people start Proverbs, they just don't finish it because like... Just... Proverbs chapter 4. You got to desire truth. You got to know truth. But you have to accept truth. Proverbs 4, verse 10. Listen, my son, accept what I say. And the years of your life will be many. I will guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it. Go on your way. For they cannot sleep till they do evil. They are robbed of slumber till they make someone fall. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter to the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They don't even know what makes them stumble. You and I have the infallible truth. It's upon you and I to desire nothing greater than the truth, to know the truth, to hold on to it, to accept it. And if we do that, we will be set free. We will set other people free. We will change our campuses. We will change our cities, our nations, and to God be the glory. Amen? You must desire the truth, you got to know the truth, and you have to accept the truth. Fernando, thank you so much for flat out preaching the word, my brother. You know, I'm grateful that we have come here today not simply to a church meeting. We have come today not cer certainly just for a get-together, but the Bible says in 1 Timothy 3 verse 15 that the church is the pillar of the truth. That we are uh, here to uphold it. You know, we were uh, doing some ministry over there at UCSB, University of California, Santa Barbara. And as the brothers and I are sharing our faith, we saw like horoscopes on the banners of these places. And no one bats an eye. See, no one bats an eye as it, at Islam. Because Satan's not worried about Islam. No one bats an eye at Buddhism. Satan's not worried about Buddhism. But what do people bat an eye at? Christianity. You put a scripture on that wall, people are freaking out. Why? Because it's the pillar of the truth. 
I'm grateful to be a part of a church that knows we're the pillar of the truth. You know, for me, I grew up believing that, man, if I just go to church, be a decent dude. I could smoke a little weed. I could, I could go to a party. I could, I could hang out here, hang out there. But if I just go to church, maybe like I was a CEO of Christmas, Christmas and Easter only Christian. Maybe God will like wipe me clean. I'll be good for a couple months and I'll come back. No one ever said, hey, you actually got to, God expects obedience. Hey, God wants you to seek him with all your heart. You want your girlfriend to seek you with all your heart? So why would I not seek the person who created my girlfriend with all my heart? But I'm grateful that someone had the conviction. I'm grateful that someone was a part of the pillar of the truth and said, I need to spread it to somebody else. And that man came up to me and I accepted the truth. You know, the Bible says that everybody's a slave to something. And I believe Fernando had us ask that question to ourselves. Why not ask another question? Who is your master here tonight? Maybe it's been a fraternity. Maybe it's been a sorority. It's been a relationship. It's been a lie. But I'm grateful we've been presented the truth tonight. I want to challenge those who are visiting. Study the Bible. If you're studying, keep studying. And allow the truth to trump your emotions and not the other way around. I give you a card. Amen. Wow. What an incredible lesson. It's just so encouraging for both Ashton and I to hear from our father in the faith, Fernando. Um, this is such an incredible lesson. And I come before you uh, myself as somebody who used to be somebody who followed their heart. I went to San Jose State University with Ashton. We both uh, lived in the Bay before this. And um, for me, I went after everything that I felt like would make me happy. I felt like partying would make me happy, like it would make me full, like I would have fun. I felt like living the college lifestyle would bring me the most joy that I could have. That's what everybody tells you. I felt like joining a sorority, being surrounded by a sisterhood was going to bring me so much comfort. I felt like boys and relationships were going to fulfill me and make me happy. I'm young, right? That's what, that's what everybody does. I felt like drugs were going to fulfill me. Just, just, it's just weed until it became weed and then ecstasy, until I was raving every single weekend. And at the end of the day, I realized that I was totally deceived. At the end of all of these things, as I went through thing after thing after thing, I was extremely empty, extremely empty. And, and, and what's funny is when I was seeking after God, when I realized, wow, I, I desire something deeper, the only people that I knew were people at, my, at, in, at the parties that I was at. And I would ask them, hey, hey, do you know anything about God? And they would say, yeah, for sure, like, come to church with me, even though they were at the, the party, same party that I was at. And then the next day, we didn't even go because they were too hungover to go. But it wasn't until someone came up to me who, who actually lived out the truth and studied the Bible with me, and I saw really what it looked like to obey God, to have a relationship with God. I changed my entire life, and I got baptized. And let me tell you, a relationship with God is 20 times better than any of that stuff that I was doing. And so, women, if you're here tonight, if somebody invited you out, I want to encourage you, please go after the truth. Go after a relationship with God. And you might say, hey, I already know God. I've already studied the Bible. I've already read the Bible. Well, let me ask you, are you free? Do you feel free tonight? Are you still struggling with the sins that you've been struggling with for the last, like, 10 years? I really want to encourage you, study the Bible. Get to know the truth about God's word. I love you guys. Hey, thank you. Family, tonight you did not come to USC. You came to JCU, Jesus Christ University. And at this school, we withhold the truth in the central region. We withhold the truth over there in the east region. We uphold the truth in the west region. We withhold the truth in Santa Barbara. We uphold the truth in Ventura and all of SoCal because we will see all nations and hit them with the truth, amen.